So Hasbro just had their PulseCon 2023 live stream uh, today, revealing a lot of different figures from different toy lines, ranging from G.I. Joe to Power Rangers, Marvel and Star Wars and much more. And a lot of fans got excited because they got to see some new figures that they are probably going to empty their wallets with. And with Transformers, we are being brought into a legacy because currently right now, we're getting ready to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Transformers. The series started all the way back in 1984, but Diaclone and Microchange started years prior and Hasbro imported those toys had Bob Budiansky write profiles and for every single one of those characters for many years to come that we just basically grew attached to so much. That is the legacy of what where Transformers started. We had a cartoon, comics, you know, the, the franchise had a second generation that tried to, to get off the ground, but you know, it did what it did and it, it, it tried to keep the franchise going for a few more years until Beast Wars came and saved the franchise from extinction. And you know, it literally is the reason why Transformers still exist today is Beast Wars. And uh, it was such a great series. And of course, then you had Beast Machines, which uh, almost brought the franchise back into, into doom and gloom. And then you, of course you had Robots in Disguise, bringing the cars and the trucks back while still integrating with Beast Wars. A lot of fans were happy about that. And then you had the Unicron trilogy completely rebooted the franchise to a point where you didn't, you know, you, you were just happy with what you got for, for, for the older fan, but for the newer fan, it was something brand new, you know, Autobots versus Decepticons with the fate of planet earth on the balance. And let's collect them all with the Minicons. And then of course we just kept going on and on. And that success led to live action films that some fans to this day have no love for at all whatsoever. And to some it's their very you know introduction into the franchise. And then if that led to the popularity of a very cartoony styled, uh, uh, Transformers animated that many fans adore and cherish to this day. And then you have Transformers Prime to Cyberverse to Robots in Disguise, the Cybertron games. I mean, I can go on and on and on. It just keeps going, right? But as I talk about all of those celebratory things about the franchise, you know, this the, the fans themselves really have to come together. You know, the, the very origins of this franchise are important and it will always be important, and the foundation should always remain. You know, you look at characters who have been around, I mean, since the 30s and the 40s, and they still have their legacy as to what and who they are, and Transformers still celebrates that with Generation 1. We also celebrate the the changes that have, have happened, you know, with this legacy toy line, and that is why this series for the next year is going to be called Transformers Legacy United. And you can see from this poster here that the next year of toy line is starting off with, well, a not G1 centered toy line. We had many years of that, you know, with the War for Cybertron. It was really the first time that Generation 1 fans finally got figures that I could say were good. You know, I, I've heard people say like, oh, you know, you G1 fans are always getting your, your stuff. And it's like, guys, like we, we waited for years to finally get good figures like this. I mean, you know, I've heard people say like they're, you know, I, again, I don't like Michael Bay's Transformers, but, you know, the first year of, you know, the first 2007 Optimus Prime toy is not beloved by many, you know, Michael Bay Transformers fans. And yet the Revenge of the Fallen figure is. Well, here you go. You have a new figure. And it took, you know, it was only one figure later, but for many Generation 1 fans, it took gimmick-driven stuff during the Prime Wars, and finally we ended up coming to the War for Cybertron, and it's finally good, affordable, not masterpiece line versions of those characters. And so now with Legacy, the idea was, is to unite everybody together, bring a lot of those toy lines in. Hey, you remember Unicron Trilogy? Well, we're gonna bring some Unicron Trilogy toys in. You remember Transformers Cyberverse? We're gonna bring some Transformers Cyberverse in. Hey, Beast Wars is still a thing, right? So we're gonna do some Beast Wars characters. We already had it in Kingdom, but so we have some characters that many fans still wanted to have, right? And so here we can already see with Tigerhawk there with Tidal Wave. You know, Tidal Wave wasn't revealed today, and yes, he has to merge with Megatron, so they're gonna have to make Tidal Wave in scale with the leader class Megatron. He has to be in that scale, or at least in order for him to, to work properly. And at least I hope that he does, because that is a major function of what Tidal Wave was created for. 
And, you know, Tidal Wave as a character is one that I definitely enjoyed and liked uh, in the Unicron trilogy. Personally, my favorite in Armada was Demolisher. He has been on my top five for quite a while. I just, I really, really dug his character. I ate them, and they were quite tasty too. <laughs> you know, I wasn't a big fan of the Armada toys, and that's why I want a new toy of that character. And you have animated here with Bumblebee and Optimus, and you have rescue bots, and you have these new characters as well with these, these rock monster things. It's all a lot to see. But centerpiece, right there in the middle, is Magmatron. And Magmatron is from the Japanese exclusive Beast Wars series. He was one of the major villains. He actually turns into three different animals and they merge together to form one robot. Whereas the, the centerpiece for last year was the Nemesis. This I wonder if this is gonna either be a Titan or a Commander class when they when they work this all out. Now Hasbro PulseCon, it was hosted by none other than Dan Larson from Secret Galaxy, as well as my fellow Transformer Cyberverse star, Thu Adams. And both of them did a really good job in hosting the entirety of Hasbro PulseCon. But in addition, they introduced our Hasbro development team who brought in some amazing Transformers figures, uh, both old and new. And I think it's a really cool thing. So the first thing I want to talk to today about is the Hasbro PulseCon exclusive hotshot figure with his Minicon Jolt. They actually took the time to give a new mold to Jolt, which I actually think is really cool. And for those of you who don't know uh, about this character, Hotshot, he was basically the Bumblebee character for Transformers Armada. He kind of has like a cross between his storyline with Hot Rod, you know, with the Matrix. And, you know, he doesn't become, he kind of does and kind of doesn't become leader. And then the next year, you know, Optimus still, of course, is, is leader of the Autobots. But the Power Links colors for Hotshot uh, actually look closer to Hot Rod in vehicle mode. And he does have the mini con post that he did before. He has blasters that he used, I believe. I don't remember, I don't remember if it was in the Dreamwave comics or if it was later in the uh, in the Armada anime. But either way, it's cool that both figures are getting released for Unicron trilogy fans who have been waiting for more figures for their favorite versions of characters. Now, I do want to briefly mention the two animated characters that were revealed today with Bumblebee and Optimus. I talked about them at length in my last video, and I was trying to tell fans, hey, we really do need to be a little bit more united as far as fans and not attacking each other for enjoying a different iteration of Transformers, you know, not hating the very foundation of where Transformers began, as some do, uh, and not attacking fans of other series. Because really, at the end of the day, what we're seeing a lot of is that. And it doesn't just mean it's just like from from the G1 fan to the, you know, to the Bayverse fan and vice versa. It's just all around like the negativity has got to go away. You know, coming on 40 years of Transformers. Let's try to enjoy it. You know, it's going to be around for years to come. New toys are going to come out. New toys could come out, you know, five years from now, you know, and they might make another animated Bumblebee that is one for one. This one will work for the animated fan who enjoys Generation 1 as well. And you know something? I honestly believe, you know, that there are many of animated fans who, who enjoy that. So I'm just saying that as it is. And seeing the official images of him, he looks a lot better in robot mode. He needs some color, you know, yellow on the thighs, uh, you know, black on the, on the, uh, the tips of the toes. The vehicle mode itself, I'm not happy about the clear plastic and the way that this is kind of, I honestly think this is mistransformed. Definitely is going to need Toy Hacks labels to cover up and bring in some of those windows because it, it's definitely missing out of the toy. And again, this is an objective look at it. It's just another version, another take on your favorite character. Hey, the franchise was made for change. So, you know, just the fact that animated is changing, hey, we're not getting another uh, of this. So, and and this entirety of this line, you know, I also dig the way that animated Optimus Prime looks. I saw so many animated fans just saying, oh my gosh, yes, yes, I have been waiting for a new animated Optimus Prime. I don't have the original or I lost my original or I have my original and I want that. I want this new one. There are a lot of people who are just like Optimus Prime fans. They'll collect anything and everything that has the name Optimus Prime on it. And there, there are some fans who are out there who are like that. And 
I think this figure in and of itself looks very, very good. And I cannot wait to see them do something. Maybe they might do a Battleizer that becomes Optimus Prime's the, the fire engine piece for the back and gives him his whole jet wing. I think a lot of animated fans would be happy about that. And maybe even give him that faceplate because I've never been a fan of Optimus without a faceplate. You guys know that. So if you were a fan of Transformers Energon, which it's a very hard series to go back and watch. I don't know if you've ever gone back and watched it recently. I've, I've had to do so for a couple different retrospectives this past year, and it was a hard, hard sell for me. <laughs> um, but I liked some of the character designs for some of them. And Energon Galvatron was one of them. And, you know, and I say that is Energon Galvatron because in Japan for Micron Legend, it was Megatron was the, uh, you know, in, in Micron Legend was Armada. And then he became the Power Links. We know him as Galvatron in the U.S. It was just Power Links Megatron. And then when he got revived in Super Link, which is Energon, it was just Galvatron the whole time, which is what his design was literally meant to be. It's almost as if they were trying to say, let's go back to that Generation 1 style for the character, but let's do something different in colors. And lo and behold, we got this color scheme, which some fans really love. I loved it when he went into got the Super Energon and became that, like, the purple. I thought that was just, I was like, yes. You know, it looks so cool. You know, and his jet mode was also neat. Uh, because it gave like an upgrade to his tank mode. I thought it was kind of weird that his tank was small and he used that as an arm cannon and a sword. Um, but the shoulder cannons themselves also, you know, stick out this way. And the, the thing that the toy can, you know, that this particular toy can do is he can actually hold the cannons in his fists instead of just having them on his shoulders, which is not something that the original toy can do. Another character that you probably have no idea who this is is the Tasmanian Kid. And if you've ever seen the Beast Wars animes, Beast Wars the Second and Beast Wars Neo, you would know who the Tasmanian Kid is. And so this is when you get to the cases of obscure characters, characters that you hadn't seen in a long time or ever, because, well, for some Transformers fans, it was their era, and they never went back to go watch some of the Japanese exclusive stuff. They never, you know, dived into it or they were G1 fans and they never dived into the Beast Wars stuff or Beast Wars second. And even if they were Beast Wars fans, they may have never checked it out. You know, car robots, technically speaking, which is Robots in Disguise 2001, is technically like the third series of the Japanese exclusive Beast series in a way in a way it's it's kind of weird how to how to describe it but that's kind of how like the way the three series were designed and developed and made and how the toys were made and a, a lot of it is redecos of existing beast wars figures that never got brought into the beast wars cartoon and here a tasmanian kid actually himself turns into a not you guess it a tasmanian devil <laughs> not taz from looney tunes but you know this tasmanian kid and i think it's a really cool toy now this is a figure that wowed me it really did you know i wanted to see them upgrade rescue bots into a generation style for quite a while because it was interesting to see when you watch robots in disguise or Transformers Prime, and those characters cross over into Rescue Bots, they have to literally change their whole look for Rescue Bots. But what happens when they come over to outside of Rescue Bots? Well, Blur is the perfect example of, of a character that actually did that, and he changed his look to a, it seemed to be like a more Generation 1 style take on aligned Blur. But I really wanted to see what Rescue Bots, uh, Rescue Bots, the rather the actual core cast of Rescue Bots would look like, and Chase is definitely one of them that really met, like does it well. He does it in wonders. Looks great, fully posable. Uh, you know, Rescue Bots Chase. It was definitely an enjoyable character. I think all of the characters in Rescue Bots were, and. You know, I think that as far as a robot mode is concerned, it's cool to see this. Like, he's not a fighter. You know, he never was. But they're giving him, like, a claw weapon. I, I think it's a claw weapon. It's a claw tool, right? In order to be used in rescue missions. Because he's not a fighter. Um, he is a, a, a robot that wants 
the law upheld and you know he'll stand great next to my animated prowl and my g1 prowl which i have a different name for for uh animated prowl and that's just my own personal take but to have all three of those characters together i think would be a treat and i actually really dig his car mode here um when i'm looking at it i can totally see redeco potential out of it first and foremost i love the car itself I think it's a great model for them to use as a cop car for him. But then I got to thinking, and I'm sure a lot of fans have already thought about this with Chase. Well, what if Rescue Bot Chase was retooled into Lockdown? I can totally see that happening with Lockdown. I want an animated Lockdown in this aesthetic. I want it, and I would buy it, and he would look great. It's already a good looking figure, you know, it has that Sunstreaker-esqueness to him with the, you know, the hood of the car being his legs and the roof of the car being his chest. And having that for lockdown, I think, would be welcome with the spikes and everything and add on some attachments to him. You know, that would be really cool. But I also want to say, like, animated Bumblebee, I can see him being retooled and I would definitely buy it if it was Wasp. Definitely would buy it if it was Wasp. Now, the next figure on this wave uh, is the in in Infernac Universe Magnius. Uh, basically, they're kind of doing Rock Lords <laughs> uh, or a spiritual successor to Rock Lords. And they, say, they stated in an episode of Transformers Headmasters, the Japanese exclusive series, the uh, six shot actually fought a bunch of rock monsters that merged together on a... On a alien planet and infernac universe could refer to the inhumanoids it could also refer to you could basically say this is challenge of the rock lords transformers edition so i wanted to bring this image up first because this was the packaging and remembering which which character was which with these new guys is kind of difficult and the vehicle mode is basically covered in rocks and he is bringing back the weaponizer gimmick where the transformer itself can fully transform into vehicle mode, but then can be pulled apart into pieces to be used for something else as armor for another transformer. And his robot mode, which you can see here, you know, I, I kind of wondering if maybe they might actually bring in Granix. And if you don't know the name Granix, uh, you probably should take a look at the earlier the earlier drafts of Transformers the movie where the planet that Unicron ate in the 86 movie was uh, the planet of Lithone. And Lithone was actually supposed to be rock people and then it eventually evolved into robotic people and those robotic people were supposed to transform. And then, of course, they didn't transform, but they were given alt modes. So I wonder if we might see Granix, not Cranix, but Granix. But that's just, you know, me kind of like speculating based upon looking at a toy that, you know, some fans might be very, very interested in. Um, I think it's kind of cool for a character that is a, a weaponizer that can be pulled apart into a million pieces and be used. And they're calling them armorizers here. So, you know, you can see Legacy animated Bumblebee using him as a weapon and as a shield and, and blasters. And so all of that stuff can be incorporated into the toy. Which reminds me that Boulder Crash is the other core class figure in this lineup. And he is the other. Uh, I don't know if he is an armorizer as well, but it is kind of part of his function that he can turn into a weapon. His robot mode, again, is made out of rocks. And his motorcycle mode is basically lava. <laughs> it's, it's a very cool looking figure. I think he turns into a blade weapon for someone else to use. And I think that's kind of the whole concept is that the smaller figures will become weapons and the larger figures are going to be armorizers where they come apart. So we're going to see a lot more out of these armorizers for the entirety of Transformers Legacy united very quickly i will mention that laser optimus prime is being repacked i'm going to be honest with you i have laser optimus some people already have him too i really would prefer if they did a cartoon accurate deco for car robots slash robots in disguise black convoy i i really would would love it if they actually did that um, because I missed out on that figure. Uh, I know it was a Walmart exclusive, but I really hope that they do a package refresh for him in one, maybe as a Generation Selects exclusive, actually make it a, 
uh, the cartoon accurate deco. That would be great. Now, when I was at BotCon, I got to speak with the voice actress for Transformers Cyberverse Windblade. And her and I literally agreed with each other that we said that Windblade needs a new and better toy. She's literally said to me, she goes, yes, yes, absolutely. And this was, I believe this was her, one of her first appearances at a Transformers convention. And so her getting to interact with Transformers fans and, and be excited about that, it was really great talking to her. And maybe we might actually do an interview and actually talk about this toy. Um, this figure looks great, really does. Uh, her robot mode is super posable, very accurate to Transformers. It's supposed to be for Transformers Cyberverse. But the thing about this figure is that Cyberverse does match really well with Legacy in its aesthetic if you make it very poseable because the Cyberverse toys were not very poseable. My downside to the figure, if I was to say just looking at it alone from its standpoint without any weapons, is the wings. And that they, they made the wings look like, I mean, you have the removable uh, you know, turbines, but the waffliness of the bottom of the wings there kind of requires a filler kit to finish that look and I don't care for that. But other than that, I think the figure looks awesome. And, you know, the figure is super poseable. She comes with her sword. I also like her original sword, the one that came with previous versions of the, you know, of the character. And so the sword in and of itself being just like flames is kind of a downside, but I understand why they did it. And the reason why is because of her jet mode. And this time I like this jet mode. I have the original Thrilling 30 Windblade figure still in the package, and I have the Titans Return, you know, Windblade. Actually, it's not Titans Return, it's the Takara Legends one that came with the Target Master, because I wanted the better paint scheme. And my problem with it was that she didn't have a, you know, a proper tail fin, you know, in jet mode, and the sword had nowhere to store. Like, you couldn't put the sword anywhere. And... I think that sword's going to go with this figure <laughs> because, you know, I like the original, you know, weapon for her as a character. But, man, I am very, very happy and excited for, for both Cyberverse fans, but anyone who is a fan of Windblade as a character. I think her toy looks great. Definitely going to add her to my collection for sure. Now, this next figure is one that I'm actually very, very surprised about because I never thought that we would see a new figure for him. You know, Transformers uh, line continuities... Thundertron was supposed to be the main villain of the third season of Transformers Prime. But the writers of the show, and they're blowing the budget all the time, uh, got into arguments with what Hasbro was desiring for the show. And so they eventually shifted for Beast Hunters. And poor Thundertron was dropped from it. But he is also in the Align, Align Continuities novels. You know, he is leader of the Star Seekers, which go inter they're intergalactic pirates. So it's a pretty cool idea. So if you're looking for a pirate transformer that kind of reminds you of Blackbeard in a way, uh, this would be your villain. And he turns into a lion mode that resembles another transformer. And I honestly believe that this figure is going to be redecoed into Leo Breaker just based upon his look. I honestly think that that's what we're going to end up seeing. We're going to see a Leo breaker out of him. But I think he looks cool, and he's got a lot of play features. He has that pirate symbol on the back of him. I wonder if we're going to see the rest of the pirates in his crew. I know they were alluding to that. I got to say, this figure got me super excited. I loved Tigerhawk, even though I know the writers did not. I was really upset that Tigertron and Air Razor about what happened with them. And so seeing that those characters return, I thought was just awesome. And Tigerhawk came in with a, an explosive uh, reaction because he blew up the Predacon base in Beast Wars. And he came in for the final few episodes and the original toy was something to be desired. So finally a new toy coming out for him and he looks great. They actually went for the, the animation 
uh, deco for the blue and the purple. And and the weapons themselves here, the cannons are removable. And so it just, he, he looks awesome, it really does. And in tiger hawk mode or beast mode, uh, it, just, it just looks really cool. I, I'm, I'm beside myself. Like this is one figure out of this wave that really got me excited. I was like, yes, 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 Tiger Hawk. <laughs> and if you guys know, what was one character that I said that I wouldn't mind seeing a re-deco of if they ever decided to do so for my namesake <laughs> would be this guy. Um, you know, to be like, you know, maybe retool him as a griffin or something like that uh, with a different head. And maybe that would be kind of cool because, but at the same time, though, the figure itself looks great. I love the character, love the deco, just really, really excited about it overall. And with that, we see how all of these different Transformers for the very first wave of Transformers Legacy United. I think this is a good start to the year as many Transformers characters from different universes, from Generation 1 to, you know, from Beast Wars and Animated and Transformers Prime and the Unicron Trilogy and Cyberverse, all are getting made with brand new to toys and characters. I think that, you know, Windblade is probably going to get retooled into Slipstream, you know, which I think from the leaks is what we're seeing. And it's probably going to have the, the probably more accurate wings, hopefully. I think it's going to be a complete retool, personally. But anyway, um, but looking at it, I'm very, very excited for many different Transformers fans who are seeing some of their favorite characters being brought out with new toys. Beast Wars fans can get excited for the, the different eras of beasts. I know I am. You know, the animated fans have brand new toys for the characters that they know and they love. And I actually think that these toys look really good. If you are an animated fan, I can't not recommend them enough. Rescue Bots Chase is a definitely a must for me. So Tigerhawk, Windblade, and Chase are musts for me. Maybe on a Thundertron. I think that I'm probably going to go for anything Beast. <laughs> so Tasmanian Kid will definitely be a part of my collection. And I have a few friends who are big Rock Lord collectors. So they're like, yeah, definitely. I'm going for those armorizers. See, this is what it's all about. We're trying to enjoy Transformers together. So many different eras of Transformers being brought together. Uh, and this toy line is showing exactly that. But I wonder what you guys think about all these different Transformers releases, of course. Throw, and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have many more Transformers news, retrospectives, and more coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.